Uh, breaking new. Breaking uh, new. So uh, just a reminder, um, we are two weeks away from shipping Adabox. So go to adabox.com. Sign up. And a great you, gift. You'll get an Adabox. We don't have a ton left because we have to get to all the Adabox subscribers that have stayed with us from the start. We thank all of you out there. But do go to adabox.com. First up is a coming soon. Okay. This is coming soon, but a lot of people are very excited about it, so I wanted to put it in the shop. Um, the ESP32 S2 Metro. So this is a Metro shape board that can, you can use with our Arduino shields. Uh, it also works with like a lot of Arduino accessories, but it features the ESP32 S2, which is an ESP32 Wi-Fi processor from Espressif. It has, uh, I think, two megabyte, four, four megabytes of flash, I think eight megabytes of PS RAM. Um, it has a NeoPixel, um, a reset button, boot DFU button. Um, like I said, it's got Wi-Fi, a 250, 240 megahertz TED silicon processor, um, single core. It doesn't have Bluetooth. But it does have both Arduino and CircuitPython support. I've been trying out both. Um, and Arduino supports in both CircuitPython and Arduino are beta, but they do work. You can connect to the internet and get stuff. Um, it has a built-in LiPoly charger, and it can run off, on, run off of a LiPoly battery. So it's very handy if you want to make your project portable. Uh, there's got a built-in NeoPixel, an optional debug port if you'd like to use JTAG debugging. Um, and you can also use a DC power jack for like nine volt power in. Uh, this will be coming into the shop soon. So sign up. Uh, it's going to be a very affordable and easy way to make a native USB capable Wi-Fi projects because the ESP32 S2 connect like a keyboard or a mouse or a disk drive. It's gonna be our first ESP32 that can run CircuitPython. I think a lot of people are going to be uh, using it, that with this board, and then we're going to branch out into more ESP32 yeah. devices and products. All right, next up. Next up, a Dynamixel. These are kind of interesting. So these are like really um, advanced, high-powered servos that are like really smart. So servos that we have, I mean, servos are basically smart motors, right, because they can change position. But you still have to set the pulses for a servo, and you don't get like position feedback. And like you can't set the speed and you can't like trigger them. So these are like advanced motors that are used in a lot of like humanoid robots. Like when you see stuff like people make their own little, like little dog, you know, like running robots or walking robots, they tend to use Dynamixels. They're very powerful, um, both like physically. Um, they're very well designed. They're easy to mount. They have like a lot of mounting options. Um, they also come with some uh, cool accessories so you can like mount them to each other. And they communicate over um, a serial interface. So if you go to the overhead, um, I've got here a Metro M4, and I've got it wired up to this Dynamixel. So what you can see is you chain them. You plug into one port, and then these are actually all connected together. So you can chain more motors together, and then you can see here um, this is like the motor hinge. For the motor power, you give it, um, they don't want off of 5 volts. These really want like 9 to 12 volts. They want quite a bit of power. They are powerful motors. Again, they're used for um, like walking robotics. Um, so you need ground, power, and signal. If you only have one motor, um, they're addressable. Uh, if you have only one motor, um, you can use a single um, serial pin, the TX pin, and you send it commands. If you have multiple motors, you do have to address them. And so in that case, you need to have like a Dynamixel shield. But for people just starting out, you can get started with just one. And then if you really like these motors, of course, then you can uh, pick up a shield or, or there's schematics online on how to use a pin to um, turn this interface into a, a multiplex, uh, sorry, a half duplex serial connection. Uh, but you can send commands, trigger, set speed, etc. tell it which way to turn. So if I power this up, you'll see I'm telling it to turn to the right really fast and then slowly to the left. So you give it the speed. You don't have to like worry about calibration. Like it's always going to be the same from motor to motor. So you tell it the speed you want and then how long you want it to go. Or you can give it like a goal and tell it like, you know, move until you get to this position. Um, so for advanced robotics, I think this could be uh, pretty useful i think um we'll probably carry more dynamixel type stuff but i want to start with like the most popular simplest motor to begin with it's also a nice little led on the back so um 
Yeah, this is a Dynamixel AX 12A. So uh, a, a very affordable for the capability smart servo motor. Okay, next up, run right along. Yep. Next up, we've got uh, this launch pad. This is from like a little startup, and they made some cool micro bit and clue accessories. And so I thought, yeah, this is kind of neat. So this is a breakout for every pin on a micro bit or a clue. Um, usually, you know, you can only alligator clip to the five pads on the bottom, but this one gives you all the pads. And so you can use alligator clips, you can use conductive tape, you can use conductive uh, paint if you like even. Um, I'm gonna show it off real fast on the overhead. You plug in your clue or your micro bit or any other micro bit um, size thing. So normally you only get these five pads when you plug it in, you get all the pads. And then you have to just slot it in. And then, yeah, alligator clips work divinely. You can clip like that, or you can tape to them. Um, they've got conductive material on both sides. And uh, it's nice and flat. So it's designed so you can um, use it flat on a uh, fabric or material surface. And you can you can probably even nail it down, you know, using little nails through this. And then maybe wrap wires around it. So an interesting little breakout. It looks like a TIE fighter. All right. Next up. 2020's Hollis Holiday gift is uh, Spade a, Connects. A box of Spade Connects. Spade Connects. All the kids okay. want these this year. Yes, get Spade. All right. So these are we actually use these in our um, like arcade buttons and stuff. That's what their most popular usage or micro switches. Um, you'll see these. So um, if you're making your own wires, and we have our own Quick Connects. So if you're making your own wires. You can now get just the uh, connector. So this slides onto a spade connect and then you crimp a wire on. You strip the wire with that nice wire stripper. And then you can even put um, this, like once it's crimped, it's a lot easier to do because this kind of sticks out a little bit. But you can um, put this uh, plastic sheathing over it to protect it so it doesn't short. And you get, um, there's three sizes and I think it's like quarter inch, three eighths inch, and um, one eighth inch, or, or I don't remember. I don't remember exactly. But it's like there's three different sizes, and you get one of each. It's like 0 0.118, 0 0.25, and then like 0 0.38 or something. I don't know. Um, so there's three sizes, so you can see. Oh wait, don't remember. You got small, medium, and large. And these are like these are the most popular spade connect. I actually haven't seen really anything else. Um, and you also get uh, the matching other side, like the um, the spade part rather than the connect part. So you can also, um, you know, connect to existing wires if you want to make extenders or something. So you get 50 of each. Um, you get like these little ones and then these match together. So cute. And um, the little rubber gaskets that go over it. Uh, you know, if you're working with arcade buttons or you're working, I think, like automotive or some robotics or micro switch type projects, this will come in very handy because you're always like making weird wire harnesses um, with spade connects or quick connects, as I like to call them. And it comes in a box. Okay. Oh, I got, got a couple other uh, yeah. close ups here. And, and here you go. This is like an arcade button. So you see, like, this is a small yeah. one, this is a micro switch, this is a larger one. Okay, quick and the star of the show tonight, Lady Ada, besides the community, our customers, our team, and you is? The BNO 08X. It's actually the BNO 085. Uh, and it's an interesting story. We actually started this with a BNO 080, and then we discovered uh, that there's actually an upgrade version to this chip, the 085. It's pin compatible, it's even code compatible, but the 085 fixes a little bit of a bug that they had in SPI where it would like time out too quickly, um, which made it hard to use with SPI. So we just upgraded it and we're shipping the 085 because it's the same price and does everything. And so what is this? Um, this is a all-in-one inertial measurement unit that does the inertial measurements for you. So if you've got an accelerometer, a magnetometer, a gyroscope, you probably have used one of these if you're doing electronics, and you know that they can measure twist and uh, motion and mag the Earth's magnetic field, and you can combine those using algorithms to give you true orientation in 3D space. So you know like which way you're facing. Are you facing north or up? Like your phone does this where it tells you, you you're asking for directions, it tells you which way to go, it knows which way you're facing. Um, and it can also tell you tilt, like axis and, and attitude and, and all that. Very useful in uh, robotics and um, drones and, um, you know, any, any basically any project that's interactive 
um, where you need to know where something is facing in space. Okay, so but usually you have to take that data and you merge it together using fusion algorithms. Um, and, uh, you know, there's like NXP algorithms and there's like, you know, a bunch of other named algorithms. And with, out, out pops quaternion or Euler um, angles. Um, but that requires a lot of computation. Like you actually have to sit there and you have to get all this data, you have to compute it constantly. And if you miss measurements, your data can start drifting, which is where the BNO085 come in. So this is kind of like the sister to the BNO055. It's the same hardware, but it's got a much more advanced algorithm setup. So not only does it do, you know, quaternion Euler, but it has like a step counter and it has like, you know, game vectors and it does um, activity classification. It also has a, a really simple mode that's called like, it's literally called robotic vacuum mode. Um, where it just spits out like serial data with just like the Euler information accelerometer data. Um, that's perfect if you don't want to have a complicated uh, setup. But it, it basically takes the BNO 055 and kind of makes it, it's more advanced. Um, for a lot of people, the BNO 055 will be just fine. But if you want, you know, um, UR interface, if you want SPI interface, if you want things like activity classification or step classification, uh, I, it seemed to me like the BNO 085 was a little bit more stable. It had less drift than the 055. Uh, you know, I'm not going to promise one way or the other because I didn't do a lot of sturdy tests, but I did just kind of put on the table, move it around, and I noticed it was extremely stable. Um, and we've got CircuitPython and Arduino code for this nice nine off. It comes on a STEM IQT board. You can use I2C. You can use um, SPI on our Arduino. We don't have it working in Python because uh, it's not fast enough. Um, you can also use UART if you'd like. Um, and you can also put it in this, again, this simple uh, RVC robotic vacuum mode that is, um, you know, the, it's very light on code and complexity, but you only get the uh, quaternion report. And, uh, you know, if you're doing orientation based projects, you know, nothing's going to beat this. It's going to be so simple for you. You can even use, you know, an Arduino Uno or something or a Cutie Pie. You don't have to worry about the calculation of the math. It's all done for you and just spits out that data. Um, so pick one up. It comes uh, ready to go in our STEM QT format for easy use. And, uh, you know, I think we'll see a lot of people do this with, uh, you know, drone robots, DIY drones, DIY uh, robotics projects, and a lot of interactive art projects where, um, something reacts to motion or activity, and the person just wants to get the project up and running. That's new products.